Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a deck called Big Red, which is kind of a mid-rangey red deck, which does play kind of an aggressive role at times, but it does have quite a bit of removal to interact with aggressive decks and then try and take over with its powerful curve toppers like the Blazing Sky and eventually, of course, Goldspan Dragon, which is still in standard for a little bit here. So taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we're playing Kumano, and we do have quite a few 2-drops we can potentially follow up with, so they get a plus 1 counter, and then eventually the 2-2 two -two can also add up. So at 2 mana we've got Adversary, which we can play early, but even in the late game can maybe get some spells back out of our graveyard, so still has a few different applications there. And then Berserker, also awesome if it enters with a plus 1 counter as a 3-3 first strike potentially, and we can also boast to create dragon tokens, and we do have some other dragons to potentially help discount the boast ability. And then our removal early is going to be Frostbite with our Snowlands to potentially deal 3 damage. And we've got the Dragon's Fire which can potentially deal 4 damage if we have one of our Dragons in hand or in play. At 3 mana we've got a little bit more removal with Seismic Wave which is kind of a sweeper of sorts, dealing 1 damage to non-artifact creatures the opponent controls, can also essentially deal 3 damage to one specific creature, but it does help against some of the go white decks in the format. And then we're also trying out Professional Facebreaker, which can be quite powerful if you get a first strike creature like our Dragonkin Berserker in play alongside a regular creature, that way we can maybe create two treasure tokens in one combat step instead of just one. Another card that combines nicely with Facebreaker is Goldhound, which can also maybe get that first strike damage in to create multiple treasure tokens, but that card didn't quite make the cut in this more mid-range approach. And then we also have Fable of the Mirror Breaker, a great card in any red standard deck, and we can clear a path with our cheap removal spells so our Goblin Shaman can keep making treasures, and the treasure tokens also synergize with our Face Breaker, which can then turn treasures into card advantage essentially. And then, of course, we can also use Reflection to maybe copy some cards like Goldspan Dragon, which is always a ton of fun. And then we've covered the two dragons, of course, treasure tokens having a lot of synergy with both Goldspan and our Face Breaker. And then our mana base also has a ton of creature lands, which is one of the advantages of being a monocolored deck. So we have four copies of Den and three copies of Crawling Barons, which we can also easily activate. Also a nice mana sink if we get Goldspan going, if we don't have anything else going on. And then a Crucible can also make some hasty 1-1s. And then as we mentioned, our Snow Mountains to go with Frostbite. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and seems pretty decent if we can hit our land drops. Got a perfect curve. And Berserker, quite synergistic with our other dragons. Kumano on one could be problematic if they have a hasty 2-drop. Although now Frostbite's at least able to deal 3 damage. Opponent red-white, so the Boros aggro deck. And Aspirin's gonna go up to 3 counters right away. Alright. I guess double frostbite gives us a somewhat efficient turn still. Do I attack with Berserker? I think I should hang back with it. Force him to have removal for it, and then if that removal happens to be a brutal Cathar, we can maybe punish them with instant speed, second frostbite. It's gonna be a royal eruption instead. Alright, maybe missed out on a little bit of damage, but that's okay. Do I want a Frostbite etching? Not really. There's definitely higher value targets. Problem is, I'm probably going to be tapping out for Fable if I don't draw land. If I knew for a fact I was drawing an untapped land, I would not Frostbite here and just play Fable, keep up Frostbite for like a Raichu before it picks up a counter. Yeah, you know what? Let's play it safe here. And Adversary the draw. So we can play this and hang back to trade for etching and keep frostbite for raiju before it goes off perfect all according to plan so don't want that to attack and happy to trade otherwise blazing sky might not trigger if it dies 
Fable's the only option now. So we could still easily lose despite a pretty great start from our deck, being able to answer their early threats. Another Kumano is not too bad. And the Cavalier is going to hit us for three. Okay. So, do I want to discard anything? My guess is we just play a Blazing Sky this turn after attacking with our Shaman. And then next turn we can Gold Span. Don't know if another Gold Span is better than digging for some interaction. Especially if there's Brutal Cathar for Blazing Sky. Although, I imagine we would have seen it on the Shaman. I think we hang on to Gold Span. Especially if Blazing Sky were to die, we could uh, make some treasure and with Goldspan cast both of them. It's gonna be a Raichu, so we're happy to trade here. Although they might just make a 5 5. So I could jump, make three treasure, next turn have double Goldspan. Although we still need to find an answer to the Raichu long term. So maybe I just take it now, although next turn, once this transforms, I will no longer get the death trigger. So I think we do trump, even though it doesn't feel great. Alright, so what's our plan here? We can gold span into another gold span. We also have a crawling baron, so we cannot forget about, which could certainly come in handy. Yeah, I guess double gold span is fine here. Hit for 8, and then next turn we could hit for 12. If we copy with Reflection, and I'm fine jumping with a Shaman. And then Crawling Barons could also potentially help out if needed. Our opponent's deep in thought. And there's not too many cards that could mess us up here. So we'll see what they can present. A lot of haste damage coming in, so they might force us to jump with Reflection, perhaps. But then there's still Crawling Barons alongside Double Gold Span. Alright, Adversary can get back a Burn Spell. Take out a Blocker. Still don't think that's going to be enough. Once we factor in our Creature Land. Although I guess the Raiju deals two more damage when it attacks. So that starts adding up. So Reflection down. Opponent does just send with all. But yeah, they have to kind of toe the line between attacking with enough creatures to force us to chump versus having something back to block the Crawling Barons, which now they didn't. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, that game was incredibly close. Slightly different sequencing on our removal could have lost us that game if the first Raiju got out of hand. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems quite promising. Plenty of cheap removal to back up our Fable. Although against control, we uh, don't really want too many removal spells. Let's see if the Hasty Adversary survives. It does not. Well, now maybe the Fable token does. And then we can discard some of our dead removal spells. Opponents got their own fable. So, difficult question. Do we play our own or do we answer the opponent's token before it gets going? I think we need to play our own as everything else is just mana inefficient. Whereas next turn we can kill the fable token and the reflection itself. Opponent gets to attack. We'll take it. And iteration to play. Finds a land. So the full two for one. Alright, get to attack, play a tap to den, and then have a few removal spells we can fire off. Don't actually think we discard anything. Keep dragons fire to answer opposing dragons. 
I probably need to answer both halves of Fable. This also has the upside of playing around Jory Disruption. Opponent moves to combats, can kill the shaman. Now I might not want a Dragon's Fire Reflection yet, because let's say I play Goldspan next turn attack. I'll have three creatures in play, and if I kill my opponents versus zero, so then if they play a board wipe, I'll be pretty far behind. Or we can take a different approach, and instead of Goldspan, just attack with a creature land next turn, so we diversify a little bit better. Let's try that. No need to reveal Goldspan. It's gonna be a big score in response. Okay. That works. Alright, now that we have a backup Goldspan, it's probably fine to run one out there. And hope there's no board wipe, but if there is, we can still rebuild. Their opponent's probably taking six. Next turn on tapping. Burn down the house. Still have some mana left over. And then we can play Goldspan using one treasure and animate then to attack for eight. At least that's the hope. But maybe something else will happen here. Nope. Burn down the house. Okay, I think we stick to the plan. So one treasure, and then our treasures make two mana each, so we can activate then. And I could play Berserker afterwards. That's probably fine. Points at four, facing two lethal creature lands, and they need to answer the board as well. Alright, they've got their own gold span. Could have been a reason to hang on to ours instead of playing Berserker, but I think I like the added pressure. Gold span probably has to play defense here, which is not where gold span wants to be, and there's a lot of stuff they still need to deal with. Maybe they can take an extra turn here, and then we could still be in trouble. If they get to attack with Goldspan and untap with a ton of mana, just a big score to kind of cycle. They do have a Memory Deluge. Don't think they'll be able to cast that one. So it's still 7 mana, potentially 9 if they attack. Better opponent between a rock and a hard place. Fable has a chum blocker on the ground. And then our plan's probably going to be to animate, then attack with Goldspan, and then before blockers cast a Dragon's Fire so that we can still uh, attack with a den, otherwise that wouldn't work. Attack with all. Make a treasure, and then Dragon's Fire. And I hope that works. But it does get one more treasure here. Possible just using Frostbite on the Shaman would have been good enough. Main concern here would be a pump spell like a show of confidence that's sometimes played in these gold span decks as a finisher. Alright, negates. I guess that works. So now what? They block then with gold span and still die, so they do need something else here. And this also has them taking four. Alright, so barely managed to finish off the blue-red control deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is quite promising. Kumano into Adversary. Concealing Curtains could maybe get in the way. Now we also have the option of Berserker, as opposed to Adversary on 2. Since the haste doesn't really matter when they can block or 3-3. So, Mono Black Control. 
Having creature lands is going to be important. And hasty goldspan dragons are always welcome. So Berserker for now. And then next turn we could maybe put Seismic Wave to use to clear a path. If they decide to transform into Revealing Eye. They had to play an untapped Agadim, so probably don't have many other lands left. And the Celestis. Hopefully no Blood Chief's Thirst to follow up. Alright. So... Can attack with the team. Or we could play Phase Breaker, but we'll only get one treasure at most. So I think we attack and then use Seismic Wave to finish off Concealing Curtains. And I guess we'll let First Strike damage happen and then we can do the wave. Okay. This would be the perfect spot to play Face Breaker and make a bunch of treasure. And a Massacre, sadly, gonna wipe our board, thanks to Celestis. Now our board looks a lot less exciting. Field of Ruin also an answer to Den. Well, I guess double Adversary is to play here. Hit for four. And hope there's not too many more sweepers in our future. It's gonna be a Turgrid, four, five. Well, does die to Frostbites and conveniently have three Snowlands. Their opponent's definitely going to block. And Turgrid can be finished off. And I'll hang on to my treasure for now. So that worked out. Timely top deck. Trespasser can try and stabilize them. Although Facebreaker can still attack past it and so can a Den. Alright, now I guess they can double block Phase Breaker. Adversary has a Frostbite and a Seismic Wave in the graveyard. So I could play Adversary for 5 mana, and then get back Frostbite, kill Trespasser, and discard the other Phase Breaker to pay for it. I think that's worthwhile. I suppose at this point we might as well go for the uh, Seismic Wave, which will also finish off the uh, Trespasser and deal a bit more damage. So 2 to Trespasser, 1 to the opponents, discard Phase Breaker. And now they cannot block my 3-powered adversary with Curtains. Opponent takes 5, down to 5, make a treasure. And we'll save that for next turn to maybe activate then. So, yeah, if we can dodge a sweeper, we might be able to get there. Henrika, pretty strong too here. Probably gonna transform right away into a 3 4 Death Touch lifelink. Fable the draw. So, what happens if I were to animate then attack with all? Opponent blocks two of my three powered creatures, gains three up to eight, and then only takes five. So they would survive. So that doesn't seem like a great attack. So then we either play Fable or activate Phase Breaker in the hopes of finding something useful. Although if we reveal Goldspan, I wouldn't be able to play it. But if we reveal a land, that's pretty useful. Alright, Dragon's Fire, also useful. So now... Probably just attack with a team, and then we can finish off Henrika. And probably play Fable as well. So that happens. Alright, so we're back on the board. Ooh, Blood on the Snow, did not want to see that. 
At least they didn't have a ton of snow sources, but still gets back a curtains. And I think we discard Kumano at this point. A land would be better to activate than draw Kumano anyway. Yeah, this game might slip away now. Just needed to dodge another sweeper. Couldn't quite get there. They still have a Field of Ruin to answer then, so we're not working with a lot here. Celestus, gonna provide a bit of card selection too. Still haven't drawn any Goldspan Dragons, so I guess we can still count on those showing up. Although their opponent discarding Soul Shatter is not a good omen. So we've got a Reflection. Any point in activating then? I guess might as well make him do it, although if they have another removal spell, keeping Den around means we can maybe cast a gold span if we draw it. So I'm not sure. Point's probably going to feel the ruin anyway. That's fine. Okay, so hoping to top deck dragons. And hoping the opponent doesn't have much going on in the meantime, but Celestus means they get to see multiple cards per turn. And the Disciple, just a 1 1 blocker. Dragons fire the draw. Okay, so. Yeah, I guess copying etching, if they block with curtains, I can finish it off with the Dragons fire and exile it in the process. So that seems fine. Reflection does gain the opponent some life with a Massacre out. Opponent passes or activate Celestis main phase in the hopes of finding something they can cast, otherwise it would switch to Knight anyway. This card's another Disciple, not too useful right now. Alright, I guess we run it back, or we can activate Reflection in the opponent's turn, but then we get punished by a Sweeper, so might as well do it now. Opponent jumps. I'll hang on to Frostbite, even though they might have more discard effects coming up. Not sure how long we're gonna be able to get away with this before the opponent finds another sweeper. And yep, there it is. And now five snow sources means Turgrits may be coming back. Or did we exile her? We did not. Yep, so Turgrits gonna take over at long last. No creature lands to work with. Really needed a gold span to have somewhat of a chance, but now I think the game's out of reach. Alright, was well, definitely a close one. If we dodge the second sweeper, we maybe get there. Kill Henrika before she triggers. Opponent might have a Soul Shatter in hand, waiting for a Dragon. Which, if they make a Sacrifice, comes into play under the opponent's control. Well, opponent is empty-handed. So I guess we'll give it a shot, although... Opponents just put a Hive in play, so they've got a Tutron Clock between Hive and Turgrid. That being said, attacking is still probably our best option as both creatures have a menace and invoke despair. Yeah, that's a pretty good description of how we're feeling right now. And also a combo with Turgrid, so our opponent finally got some value onto the next one. All right, we're on the play, hand is acceptable. Kumano into Berserker as a 3-3 first strike, into Fable. Could use some removal. Let's see what we're up against. A red-white, so another Boros burn deck. 
Well, Berserker gonna hold off most attackers. And then we have to decide which 3-drop to get going first. Maybe a Royal Eruption here, killing Berserker, fair enough. Back up Berserker. So now I'm kind of liking Kumano plus Berserker, so next turn we can play a Face Breaker with a counter. Although I guess Face Breaker now lets us make a treasure, so we can also play Kumano. Yeah, maybe that's not so bad. Upside of having both first rank and regular damage is potentially making two treasures. But this is still quite mana efficient. So the red-white deck kind of on the defensive here, don't see that very often. Although as I say that, our opponent turns both our creatures sideways. Dragon's Fire, a great draw. So we can play Berserker, attack, make a treasure, still have Dragon's Fire available. And cast a Dragon's Fire at our convenience. Gonna try and kill Cavalier before it can train initiates. Although right now they need an answer to Berserker before they can consider attacking. Brutal Cathar will do. So we'll kill the Cathar now before it exiles Berserker so we don't lose our counter. As we won't really be able to set up an ambush. So Berserker stays, Ponan doesn't have any attacks now. I guess they can train initiates, but lose Cavalier in the process. That works for me. And another Face Breaker's excellence. Can play that and make all the treasure in the world. Put maybe holding on to a play with fire. Kills one etching, but doesn't prevent any treasure making. So yeah, that plus one counter from Kumano making all the difference. And I probably want to use a Face Breaker's ability, as we haven't played a land for the turn yet. There we go. And then now I'll play the Fable as well. And now any extra treasures we generate can be turned into card advantage with Face Breaker. All their opponent seems pretty dead. Could have also made a dragon with a berserker, just by boasting potentially. But her opponent explodes, so yeah, definitely put uh, Boros Burn deck in its place here, but had a pretty great draw as well. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Bit of removal into a berserker. Hope to find some three or four mana play to bridge the gap to Goldspan. Well, let's see what we're up against. We are missing creature lands, which could come back to haunt us, especially if we're up against control. But still plenty of time to draw Den or Crawling Barons. Put on blue-black. Those look like control. And we found a Fable, so that's a nice turn 3 play. Berserker gets Versed. Can maybe play our Den next turn. Frostbite still useful for maybe tagging a Planeswalker, but might end up getting discarded to our second chapter. It's gonna be a Skyclave exiling our enchantment. Okay, and Dragon's Fire is the draw. So I can attack with my Shaman, and then we could even play Goldspan's second main if we'd like. Does play around a counterspell, I suppose. Although we don't get that Haste's benefit. Or we can take out Skyclave and keep our Shaman token around and play a tap to Den. Kind of a close call. Opponents might have access to Wandering Emperor next turn. Great answer to Goldspan as well. So there's a lot to consider. I don't think I need to play around a Counterspell too much. So let's just take out Skyclave using Frostbites. Get a token back. And then this may already be enough to prompt a sweeper from the opponent, which would then set up our gold span nicely. 
Uh, it's going to be a main phase Wandering Emperor. I'd love to see that. So now Goldspan's more likely to survive, although they might have a backup. So token gone. And probably still send the Illusion to finish off Emperor. Plenty of mana to work with. So if we find a phase breaker, we can convert treasures into card advantage. And yeah, they had another Emperor, not too surprising. Still have a Den of the Bugbear at least. Can easily finish off the Emperor with a 1-1 token. And an Adversary is not bad. Could go for a Frostbite as well. Activating Den's a little too tempting though, as a 1-1 just lines up so nicely. And then I'll save Adversary for another turn. No wedding announcements. So now Adversary getting back something like a Frostbite could work. Could also take out Kaito with the Dragon's Fire before it phases out. And then our opponent's gonna have a couple blockers, but we can take one out. Yeah, sure. Okay, so how much mana are we working with? Don't think we have enough for Den and a Kicked Adversary. So I guess Kicked Adversary it is. And then I could, I guess, even pay twice to get both burn spells back. Yeah, that seems nice. So we'll clear a path, get in for 8, and then even if a board wipe were to happen we still have a den left over, although I guess our opponent would also get a chum blocker, so then we would have an interesting game. It's just going to be an aspirant. So more of the mid-range variety than pure control. And send in den, dragon's fire aspirant. Can see if they maybe have a response to us attacking first. But they don't, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is probably fine. Could use a third land, of course. But plenty of draw steps to get there. And then Berserker. Also a decent creature on defense. Can play a den for now. Red-green might be werewolves, or just kind of a mid-rangey... Chariot deck. Phase Breaker, pretty good alongside a first strike creature. Although I would probably play a Fable first, and then we can maybe have both a first strike and regular creature connecting for two treasures instead of just one. Draw a disruption to counter, and the opponent has their own Fable. Well, I think we get our own Fable going, or we can play Phase Breaker to block, and then if they have removal, we're in trouble. Or even uh, partners to put counters on the Shaman. Yeah, this puts us kind of in a rough spot. I think I get Fable going since I need to get extra lands to uh, hit my land drop next turn. But never want to be on the receiving end of a Fable, as the opponent's going to get to attack first, draw cards first, find answers to our Shaman, and kind of snowball their on-the-play advantage. Which is why having cheap one-mana removal is so important. Happen to draw our two seismic waves, which are a bit clunky. Soaring City at least takes up their entire turn to bounce our Shaman. And then, what do we discard? Probably one Adversary and either a Wave or a Fable here. I guess I can play a Phase Breaker in the hopes of next turn also having a Gold Span to go with it. Alright, Dragon's Fire is not bad. So we'll phase breaker for now. No immediate treasure, sadly. But we can block the Shaman. And then next turn maybe clean up the Reflection with a Dragon's Fire if we hit land 5. 
Boys got their own dragon's fire. Token attacks. Opponent maybe ramping into a titan of industry at some point to copy with reflection. And a second fable. Okay, so no land 5 for gold span. So can play Berserker, kill Reflection with a Dragon's Fire. Probably the best we can do. And our opponent does seem to be holding an instant here, so it might be another Dragon's Fire. Berserker, good blocker for the Shaman as well. Yeah, hope there's no Titan of Industry coming up. It's gonna be a Voltage Surge killing our Reflection, so that's what they were holding. And another Voltage Surge kills Berserker, take four. All right. Get to play our Gold Span now, and then next turn double Seismic Wave can clean up the board. At least that's the hope. But our opponent's gonna get to make some more mana in the meantime. All right, so we can Seismic Wave the opponent's face here twice and don't get to activate then, so let's just attack. Could wait for the opponent to maybe play a creature that we also get to kill, and if they Reflection the Shaman that would die to Seismic Wave anyways. So I guess there's no real downside to waiting. Opponent copies the Shaman. And before they get a chance to attack, we'll double wave. They could have picked up another Jewelry Disruption, but can easily pay for it. So, and double red. Alright, board is clear, opponents at 8, and now they're facing a gold span and a den. So after taking a beating for a while, we might actually be able to come back. And uh, yeah, let's animate then, maybe using two mana here. And then still play Fable, even if they were to kill Goldspan here somehow. And they've got a Dragon's Fire. They did wait until beginning of combat, so don't get to play Fable without sacking a treasure, but that's okay. Alright, so still presenting lethal. Hope our opponent doesn't draw a Titan of Industry, that would be the worst case scenario. Alright, their own gold span's fine. And our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and is acceptable. Plenty of cheap interaction, just need to hit a few land drops. Up against Mono White, Aspirants is gonna die. And I guess we'll get Adversary going. Dragon's Fire can deal 4 damage, important to take out Adelin. Alright, opponent is red-white. Kumano, a bit late to the party. So not the most exciting turn for the opponents, but we also need to find a couple lands here. If they have fourth land plus Raichu, we can still kill it thanks to four damage. It's gonna be an adversary. I think we Seismic Wave as opposed to Frostbite, just because it uses up more mana. And the opponent's deck doesn't have many one-toughness creatures we could kill with it. Now we can play our Blazing Sky. Although we do have to watch out for their etching. If we lose our Blazing Sky with etching out, we might not get any treasures if it gets exiled, Brutal Cathar, it's gonna be a speed bump here. And Goldspan 
can attack alongside Adversary. And then we can Frostbite Brutal Cathar, but I'll let them block if they want to. They don't. I guess we can pass and still kill Brutal Cathar in the opponent's turn. In case we need to answer a second Brutal Cathar. Okay. I think that's fine. Can still Frostbite for one mana, killing the original Brutal Cathar, or I guess a second one, and set up an ambush. So our opponent reconsiders and does not attack. So now get back Blazing Sky, and then we can Dragon's Fire in my turn to get the hasty gold span back so both can attack. And we even found another Dragon's Fire to rub salt in the wound. So we can attack with all. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, very quick dismantling of a red-white aggro, which remains one of the most popular decks in Best of One Standard. But uh, yeah, overall, playing some close games with this kind of mid-rangey mono-red deck, it's not gonna have a stellar win rate by any means, but if you're looking to play Goldspan while it's still standard legal, this is a nice home for it as always. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.